So this video is going to be about Russia invading Ukraine or declaring war on Ukraine, whatever you want to call it, and uh, how this is going to affect global markets and how it could affect geopolitics. You know, well, I just want to address like the elephant in the room. I know we all think that Biden is like, you know, weak or whatever for not defending it or doing anything or anything like that. Um, I don't think it would have really mattered. I want to start off by making this point. I don't think it really, really mattered if it was, uh, you know, if, let's say if Trump would have got in and, uh, you know, Putin wouldn't attacked for four years. I think the writing was on the wall that Russia wanted to do this and they've been wanting to do this for a long time. They just got the opportunity now. So whether it be this president or the next president or the president after that, eventually they were waiting for the right time to attack. And um, you kind of saw the writing on the walls when, you know, I dropped the video on my page about explaining the foreign reserves that Russia was holding. And they really started getting off the dollar because when we put, we've been putting sanctions on them, you know, they're not dumb people. They realize like, okay, how, how can we work around these sanctions? You know, what, what can we do to make sure our economy still kind of keeps going so we can do the things that we want to do? And, you know, they held more gold. They held more uh, currencies from other nations to kind of hedge themselves. So I don't think they were, they were well prepared for the sanctions to come on. And economically on our side, you know, I think we get like, what, 11 or 12% of crude oil from Russia uh, or they supply the world. It's, it's one of these others, but it, it's going to affect us at home. And uh, either the government's going to have to supplement that oil coming in by letting go of some of the government reserves that we have, or they're going to have to open up the Keystone Pipeline, or we're going to have to work out a better deal with OPEC, or something's going to have to happen because, you know, on a mental state, yeah, we're not at war. America hasn't been put at war, uh, you know, with Russia or anything, but you know, there is a war going on at home, man. Like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not taking that lightly. Like, I understand a lot of people are struggling right now. And, uh, you know, coming out of the, the pandemic and, and trying to get back on your feet. And now you're going to have to pay, you know, probably in California, like seven bucks a gallon. You know, the average person, how are we going to afford that? You know, the average person is not, you know, it's, it's going to be an extreme hardship on them, man. Like, that's what they need, you know, to get to work to do everything. So that that's one way. Um, that, that is going to affect us economically. And obviously oil goes into, you know, every other, like everything in your freaking house that you're looking at right now, um, or, or looking around at or your front, everything uses oil to be made, to be produced. So obviously things are going to get more exp expensive, especially in a time of inflation, probably not good, but I'd rather have an economic war than, than a physical war. And that's my second point is regardless, even if Trump was in office and, you know, Putin would have did this, um, I want to talk to you like if, you know, me and you were just sitting here, we're just, we're just buddies talking. This isn't like, you know, whatever. Like I would tell you straight up, like I, I have some of my best friends, you know, in the military and uh, I, I don't want to see them die o over that. I'm sorry, but it's not that, you know, I, I don't care about human lives or whatever. Uh, you know, every life is important, but, you know, my friends and family lives are extremely important. And to me, I care about those lives more than anything else. And, and Ukraine needs to defend itself. I hope they do. We'll see what happens. We'll see what the outcome is. But I don't want to see any more Americans die. And I don't want us to spend any more of our money on these efforts when we have so many problems at home. I mean, we just got out of the war of Afghanistan and, you know, that ended horribly. And then we just think about the, the lives that we were lost there. It's very easy for us to sit here and just say, oh, we should be attacking. We should do something. And it's like, it's easy to say when it's not you, when it's not, you know, you're the one getting a gun and going out there on the front line. Um, and, I, and this is the view I've shaped over the years. I used to be very like, oh, America, everything. And now it's more like, you know, as you get older, you know, and, and, and you go through different experiences and you sit back and you see how the world moves, you start to realize like what's important to you. And, you know, you kind of see how countries work and like what's failed in the past. And, you know, if you want to be free as a nation, you know, we can't export that to you. We have tried over and over again. It does not work. The people of the nation need to fend for themselves. They have to stand up. And I'm okay with sending money to help, you know, with aid, to, you know, sending guns or whatever. But I don't want to put any more American lives, you know, at risk. And, you know, if, if it fails, I don't want to put more money into it in the sense of like, oh, arm more people around them, do whatever. Like I said, we have a lot of problems at home that need to be solved. But to me, uh, you know, looking at it on the other side, because I don't want to just give one, one you know, pro-America, you know, speech side of it too. You know, you look at it from Russia's side and, you know, they don't want, you know, Ukraine to join NATO. Uh, so then, you know, it's like the analogy I used to, I, I gave my friend, we were talking about it the other day. I was like, 
imagine if you just had like a crazy, you know, you know, a uh, person move right next door to your house that starts pointing guns at you every single day and you, you, you don't know what's going to come on. And Russia really wants Ukraine because they want, you know, more access into the Black Sea. And that country really right now has nothing to lose. You know, Putin has nothing to lose. This is all or nothing for him. And when you're facing a man that has nothing to lose, that's a scary thought. You know, so for him, he was going to do this regardless. And Ukraine's going to have to defend itself. But I see this more still as, you know, two pawns playing. Because I still think the the key focus here is to look at China and to see how, how does the rest of the world react to this? Right. That, that's what I'm watching in the next coming days. How do we react? How do we what do we do? Because China is going to gauge that and say, OK, can we handle this if we get Taiwan? If we go after Taiwan, can we get this? And that is even a bigger economic you know, setback for everybody because Taiwan makes all the chips. You know, they have their largest chip manufacturer building a uh, building a plant in uh, Phoenix, but it still takes time to come on. And if you know any history about China and, and Taiwan, you know that, you know, Long story long, uh, you know, the dynasty of China or whatever left uh, during the middle of World War II when Japan invaded and then Mao rose to power. They left to Taiwan. They said, China's still ours. And then Mao was like, no, it's not, you know, and they really want China or China really wants Taiwan to just nip that in the butt and also to control more territory to say, like, the CCP is the ruling party. There is nobody else. Right. And um, and then the bigger, bigger picture behind all this is where does American influence really land, right? Because a lot of people accept the American dollar and allow us to have a monopoly on our money because they expect us to fight. They expect us to be, you know, the world's police. And, you know, like I've said already, I'm not okay with American lives, you know, being lost over nothing. You know, if we get attacked, that's a different story. But then it's like, where does our power stand? Do people still respect America? Does it whatever? I just think those days are like long gone and I'll, <coughs> sorry if that cough was loud. Uh, I, I, I view the world like this. I, I look at it as people always say, oh, China's on the come up. Oh, they're, they're really strong. Oh, you know, Russia's, you know, they're strong. They're on the come up. They're whatever. But if you look at the vote of feet, and what I mean by that is, you know, they say you could vote in the ballots and you could vote with your feet. If you don't like what your state's doing, you move to another state. You're like, I'm out of here. The same thing goes for countries. If you don't like what the country's doing, you don't like the direction it's going, people vote for their feet. They leave. There's a reason why a lot of Chinese people are sending their kids, millionaires are sending their kids to like Vancouver and to California and all over the states and keeping them here because they don't want to live under the CCP rule, you know? There's a lot of people that leave Russia because they don't want to live under that rule. There's a lot. Talk to any, you know, person that left the Soviet Union and they'll tell you they will never go back. So even, you know, as far as the influence goes, I don't think it matters because I think what what's still going to happen is America is still going to take the best talent of those countries and still be able to bring them over. And as long as America stays true to our values, as far as protecting, you know, property, protecting your rights to talk you know, your rights to get ideas out and all of our amendment rights, and we stay true to that, we're still going to be number one. We're still going to be the spot where most people want to go. Majority of the people want to go. They want to live in a life. They want to live in a place where they're free and, and, they're, and they feel safe and they know they're safe. And, you know, it's, it's going to be unfortunate for those people because, you know, China's not going to stop at Taiwan. I think Putin will stop at Ukraine because the rest of his neighbors are a part of NATO and they don't want that smoke. But China will continue to push into their sea levels, uh, push territory rights, and do the things they're going to have to do. And we're going to have to deal with that, you know. And uh, I don't think the best course is always violence. And I know that people say, well, look at, you, you know, look at Germany, Nazi Germany. And, you know, they just went out and they did it. And look, we ended up having to fight them. And, yeah, we did. You know, but I, I, I hope it doesn't come to that. Nobody wants to see a world war, man. Nobody wants to see people just get killed. It, it's not... I don't think it's in anyone's best interest in any way, but things are going to happen in the world. And this, I was literally talking to my buddy an hour ago, uh, you know, we were talking about this and some other stuff and, you know, he made a really good point. He was like, the world that we're living in right now in these last couple of years has been the world that the majority of humanity has lived in, you know, with, with, uh, you know, like a pandemic and, and famine and shortages and currency shocks and now wars, 
you know, realigning territories. Like, we have been very blessed uh, as a society for like the last, you know, pretty much 100 years not having to deal with some of these crazy things. What well, 100 years is exaggerated because we had the Great Depression and we had World War One and World War Two, So it's probably like closer to like 60 years or 50 years. But, you know, in a lot of our lifetimes, you know, like I'm 30, 31, turn 31, uh, we haven't had to really experience these difficulties that people in other nations have, you know, and, and this is like probably going to be a new reality for us because, you know, I do see other countries coming up that are threats that are going to make moves and we, guys, we can't fight the world. You know, think of ourselves like in a freaking, in a prison and it's like, you know, you got your gang, they got their gang. You, you, you can't go and just fight every single gang. That's not how it works. And, you know, eventually we got to figure out if the UN, if NATO, if all these things that we're pouring money in as Americans are, is actually going to work, it's actually going to do its job, or are we just going to have to go in and, you know, save everybody every single time? Because if that's the point, then why are we sending, you know, billions and billions of dollars for aid. How about we say, you know what? Screw it. We're leaving NATO. We're leaving these, these. And like I said, this is me talking out loud, right? Because if they're not going to step up and do anything and they're just using our money and it's just like a who huffing and puffing and blowing your chest and they're not going to stand up, you know, to these big countries and we're going to have to stand up anyways. Why not keep our military spending the same, cut the spending to these other aid organizations and, and put it into right here where, where we need it in America. Let's go solve some, uh, you know, South Side Chicago from all those murders. Let's see if we could do something different there, you know. Uh, the starving kids in Ohio, let's see if we could do something there, you know. Like the Midwest that's been dying has been an economic disaster for the last, like, 20 years. Let's do something there, you know. Uh, you know, that's a thought, maybe, right. That's another thing I'm watching for is, like, how are people going to react or, or nation leaders going to react to this, and, and to wrap it up, yeah, I think China's going to react to that too. And, and I don't think that America is going to lose influence over the world. I, I know that, this, that there's this ideology of like, you know, bigger is better and, you know, this and that. I, I still think that our military is very respected, you know, all across the world. We still have bases all across the world. We're going to protect American interest. And I still think that talent that, you know, these crazy, you know, like China's crazy. The CCP is crazy. And when someone uh, has a chance to leave and come to America, they will. You know, uh, if Russia continues on this crazy allegoric path where, you know, it's not giving any, you know, if, if the situation is so dire and, and they don't really have a chance to come up in society, they'll leave. You know, just like my parents left Punjab. They didn't want to leave. They had to leave to try to find a better spot. And America at the time was the best spot. I still believe that it is. And I think that's what we need to focus on is, you know, if we want to protect America, you know, we got to focus on protecting our rights here. We can't get distracted by this stuff. And it sucks because, you know, I don't understand. You're going to see people saying, oh, you know, Biden was weak and this and that. It's like, bro, like, think about the fact that if that was your brother or sister that had to go fight, would you really want them to go die for another country that, we, like, how is that going to affect us? Right? And I know it's very harsh to say, but you got to be real at some point. You know, I do not want my brothers to go die you know, for something that wasn't, they, you know, that, 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 that's, what's that going to do for America to keep big old bad Russia down when well, they're going to try to attack again? Other, you know, you're going to have to go and just go on a full on war with Russia. And then what are you going to do? You're going to realign the whole government. You, you think you could do that? You didn't work in Iraq. It didn't work in Afghanistan. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, sometimes you got to let people fight for themselves, you know? So I don't blame Biden for it, but you know, I, I'm not trying to like stick up for him and I'm not a Biden guy, you know, like it's not like that. I think, you know, I think the world first saw it and now they know it that this administration is just, they're just there. They're just there. They're just a corporate shell to protect corporate interests and to just push things along, try to keep everything calm. They're not going to try to shake up and rally anything. And I think that's more detrimental to the American image than, you know, the president not even taking action is you don't have somebody who's respected. I mean, the guy is just like, wouldn't even take a damn question about Ukraine. It's like birds, puppets, you know, and it's just like, you know, I, I don't know, man. I mean, definitely, I think he definitely lost his reelection. And if, if America still votes him in, then I don't know. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, we're a part of our democracy, right? Anyways, these are my thoughts. Got to wrap it up in 15 minutes. If you like the video, please share it. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Appreciate your time.